Our weather pattern is changing, even while we're all still unpacking some trauma from last winter. While February brought Austin's worst ice storm on record, power outages for more than a quarter million people, and damage to one third of all trees in the city, David joins us to examine how this winter is shaping up differently, David. Well, Britt, Mike, a strong or very strong El Nino pattern is developing, and this could mean less ice, more rain, and finally some drought relief. And for all of us, in one way or another, because of the impact to our property, our people, and our water supply, this is personal. Greg Winborn had high hopes and a vision last year when he opened Vincent's on the lake. The lake was, was pretty full and all these people were going to pull up in their boats and we were going to take margaritas out to them and we were going to have live music. But Mother Nature had other plans. We opened and April went great. May was even better and then June was pretty good and then the heat set in. July 2022, Austin's hottest on record. Only two days that month with highs under 100 degrees. We just kept watching it, the lake go down and down and down. It kept getting worse. The boats could not pull in. Therefore, we lost, I'd say, you know, 40 plus percent of our business and we just could never recuperate it back. Vincent's closed six months later. Now a vacant building with an empty bar and dry boat slips. KXAN found that Vincent's is the seventh restaurant that tried and failed in this location over the last 10 years. But after years of a dry La Nina weather pattern that makes low lake levels more likely, a wetter El Nino has arrived. During El Nino winters, like we expect this year, Lake Travis goes up nine times out of 10, and the level of Lake Travis rises by an average of nine feet from November to February. Christmas 1991, a strong El Nino fueled Austin's wettest December on record. Lake Travis surged to its highest level ever, under four feet from flowing uncontrolled over the Mansfield Dam spillway. But what about the odds of another winter storm? Here's meteorologist Nick Bannon. Thanks, David. In a La Nina winter like we had last winter, the position of the jet stream allows for colder than normal temperatures over Canada, where our coldest air comes from. That allows for colder extremes to arrive into central Texas with cold fronts in the winter. But in El Nino winters, like the one we're expecting, the air north and northwest of us is chilly, but not usually as cold. So when cold fronts blow that air our way, our coldest days aren't as extreme. This means another crippling ice storm this winter, while possible, is less likely overall. Back at the lake, we asked Greg if he'd give it another shot if the lake fills up this winter. I'd do it again. Just for the fact of getting up and moving around, I'd do it. Well, our analysis found that in El Nino winters, rainfall in the Austin area averages 9.37 inches, which is more than two inches above normal. We should note, however, that some El Nino winters in the past have been drier than normal. And winters with a strong El Nino in place bring fewer freezes. Austin averages only 12 freezes compared to the longer term average of 19. You can stay up to date with our changing weather this winter by downloading the KXAN weather app with first warning weather push alerts.